So in order to view this correctly, we've had to use a 3D section or cutaway, which we find under elements in 3D, 3D cutaway. And why are we doing this? So that we can see the door openings, because if we turn the door openings off, we're going to see our entire model. So we need to restrict our view height, and that doesn't make much sense in this view. So what you probably need to do is move out of top view. I'm going to use my orbit tool in this case. It's a very big model, so it makes using the orbit tool a little bit difficult. And so rather than viewing the entire model, what we need to do is to trim using our 3D cutaway tool. So if I turn that back on, elements in 3D view, 3D cutaway. It's current, we can see that it's currently trimmed to that. And if we want to edit that, then we have on the edges of our screen these little scissors, and that's what our cutting tool is. So I can drag a new cutting tool, or I can replace the existing one. So this is my cutting tool here. And so you can see I can continue down even lower if I want to. In this case, I don't want to go any lower because I'm happy where it's sitting. So we can go back to our save view with a double click, so that makes it easy. I also wanted to make sure that I was getting some sun through these doors. Now these doors are solid, and so they're not going to emit any light. And the other issue that we have is that we don't actually have a roof. We don't have a ceiling, and we don't have the floor above, which means when the shadow stops, the shadow stops showing more light, not less light. So we're going to have to look at how to maybe fit it with that later and make it work in Photoshop to be more realistic. But for now, that's fine. So what we'll tend to do is to create multiple save views of the rendered. So once we're happy with the, the finishes, we've got the textures or the surfaces working the way that we want to, we'll have to set up a view which also includes the, the correct amount of zoom or in and out to see what we want to see. And then we're going to need to set up a visualization or a rendering. So document, creative imaging, photo render settings. Now, of course, in order to create the photo rendered, we need to use the cine render option. We can create a preview just to make sure that we're seeing what it is that we want to see. And the colors will all be affected by a few things, by the environment, physical sky, by the lamps that we have, or in this case they're called lights, but they're based on the Archicad lamps. So we've currently got a strange color, so we want to change that. We need to make this picture also a little bit larger. We'll make this 1200. So it's not going to be very high resolution. Of course, you can make it very high resolution, but it's just going to slow down your render. And we want to change this to HDRI. Let's see how this works. All right, that's a little bit clearer. And we'll give this a, a render. I like to close the window because I found that it's been crashing. If I don't, uh, always save your file before you start a render. Again, just in case it crashes. And then we're going to go photo render projection. Now, sometimes this will take a while. Sometimes it will be very fast, depending on the complexity of the model and the size of the rendering that you're trying to create. This was quite quick, so we're going to be able to keep this without having to move away. Now, the great thing about doing this as a photo render is that we're going to not just get standard shadows, but we're going to get darker corners or edges, which is realistic, which is natural, so that's fantastic. So let's save this as a render and then just create a few more just by changing some of the settings in order to understand how best to make these shadows look real. File, save as to export a picture. Top 
copy one. All right, let's close that and do it again. So we're going to go into the settings, 3D view options, 3D projection settings. We're going to keep the sun angle, which is the azimuth, and we're going to reduce the sun altitude. So we're going to reduce this down to five degrees so that we don't see anything. So we need to lift it up just slightly. We want to get high enough that we can see some sun in the room, but we're making it dark outside. Let's try that again. Um, it's turned around. It's a bit of a problem. That'll do. And we'll do one more render, just so we see what it looks like when there is no sun at all. And we can merge these together. Boom. All right. Now in Photoshop, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because unfortunately we're not working with things that are constant. We're going to drag and drop the 3Ds onto the page. Again, it's not going to be a constant size because the way that we've done this, we could have increased the the render size in order to make this work more efficiently, but then that would have slowed down the render process as well. So I'm going to make this as big as I can for now. And then I am going to reduce the opacity in order to be able to move this over where I need it to go. 